Hey, we give you the facts. It's not what you think. Popeye News Link. Young King. One yard. Bless. Good morning, Popeye. Grandma watch Popeye's every morning and every night. What am I think? What am I think? You're listening to Popeye News Links. This is the Admiral Tibet who I represent. And remember, the time is so serious. Contankerous and dangerous. This is Popeye News Links. Yeah, I watch Papa's mama. Hmm? Where I watch? Papa. Greetings, greetings, viewers and subscribers. Miss Joy, the fruitcake lady up at Mount Salem in the parish of St. James. Today is your birthday. Your entire family, they are asking us to big you up on your day. Let's hope that today you are going to be having a wonderful birthday. And may you live to see holy more now let me start off by addressing something from the video i posted this morning but first i wanted to listen to this part of the conversation listen this so let me ask you something when you find out hold on when you find out she's sexually active you, you ask her about the man or the boyfriend or whosoever i know the boy can my never tell me about it and she did deny it how old she the boys the boy i think the boy about 16 something they go to the same school so you never, you never care go to station? Know. You never care go to station? No, I don't go to station. Why I don't go to station? The boy never married really far. No, but she underage. Uh, it's a crime, you know? Oh, she's underage, but the two of them go to school together. Trust me, I'm going to be fair. My mother as well have sons. Mm -hmm. I'm going to think that that mother is wicked because the boy doesn't come here to keep on go to uh, the boy house. I think we need to go station this, I'm going to be honest. No, no, I but we, me, me understand what you are saying, but you commit an offence by not reporting it in here, you know that? Anyhow, go ahead, go ahead. Mm -hmm. eh? yeah. yeah. So, you heard that? Now, before I tell you what I consider is my duty, I want you to look on your screen. Someone made that comment under the video. The person said, and this is the first time that person is commenting on any video on the channel. Alright? So, the person said, Papai, me can't believe say, I force you, I force the lady to lock up a 16-year-old schoolboy. You let me down, Papai. Now, the Mavalika saying that goes, the fears give liar trouble. Now, the person edited the comment and wrote this. You already see how Jamaican youths have it hard. Boys, they must struggle in a school. Every day, a next one die. And instead of recommending help or some other type of discipline, your first word is to set police on him. Shake my head. Society don't have no love for man. Someone responded to the comment by saying, You really need to get your thought process in check. The juvenile system was developed before Papaya News links and it will be here long after. It was never built for dogs. It was built for young offenders. A lot of current offenders in Jamaica are of the same age. I could go on, but no. There were some back and forth under that comment, but I am sure that you get the gist. So, let me tell you something. If you are new to this channel, this channel is about law and order. No two ways about it. So, the law of Jamaica states that it is a crime to have intercourse with a person under the age of 16 years old. The law says person, not only female. So, a female can be charged for having intercourse with a male under the age of 16. And on me say so. That is the law. Now, it is a crime if you as an adult is aware that someone is having intercourse with a person under the age of 16 and you as the adult do not report it to the authorities. And on me say so. That is what the law says. I consider it my duty to point that out. If you listen to the interview again, I did not in 
anyway try to force the mother to make a report to the police. All I did was told her what should have been done under the circumstances and me pointing out that to her means me telling over 30 odd thousand people who are going to be watching the video. As the chief executive officer, the presenter, the editor, the head cook and battle washer for this channel, I consider that my duty. Now, <laughs> let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. If you feel like say, I should not have told the mother that. If you feel like say, I was forcing the mother to do anything. That are for your business. This is not about you or what you think. It's about what is lawful or unlawful. Got it? In this next report, detectives at the Savannah Lamar Sissoka office, they have now officially charged three other males in relation to an incident that is alleged to have taken place at Bullet Tree in the Petersfield area of Westmoreland over four years ago in May 2020. Remember that the police, they had already charged 33-year-old Chevan Jarrett, also known as Jaffras. 37-year-old Terence Fogo, also known as Munga. 28-year-old Terone Cunningham, also known as Adi. And 17-year-old Randre Wright, also known as Ran. The police, they have now charged 40-year-old Dwayne Vassal, also known as Crackbone. 33-year-old Andre Edwards, also known as I, and 21-year-old Corey Edwards. Remember that all seven guys, they gave themselves up to the police last week, Monday, September 2. Jaffras, Ran, Munga, and Adi, they were charged last week, and they were taken before the court where they were granted bail. Crackbone. I and Quarry, they'll be taken to the courts shortly. Unconfirmed reports are that three other guys who were allegedly involved, they are off the island. The allegation is that one of the males set it up and the other nine had intercourse with the female against her will. They were charged for rape and grievous sexual assault. Stand by. More to come. In this next report, for persons who have these slot machines in their business places, please be vigilant. There is a lot of this taking place. Listen carefully. Yesterday morning, Wednesday, September 11, at minutes after 11 o'clock, an 18-year-old guy named Jackson Davis, he's living at Back Street in the Salem area of Runaway Bay in the parish of St. Anne. He went to a bar and gaming lounge on Main Street in Ocho Rios. He bought some credit for one of the slot machines and proceeded to play games on it. Moments later, Jackson, he allegedly presented a receipt indicating that he had won $130,000 on the machine. The operator for the bar became suspicious and reviewed the video footage. Video footage showed that Jackson, he did not win anything on the machine. The video footage also showed that Jackson, he had entered the bar with the receipt. A report was made to the police and Jackson, he was taken into police custody. He was subsequently arrested and charged for the offenses of attempting to obtain money by false pretense and uttering forged documents so he'll be going to the courts shortly and i can tell you that this is not the first time i am hearing about schemes like this for persons who operate these slot machines be vigilant in this next report in yesterday's video i told you that that jdf corporal he was arrested and charged for the offense of receiving stolen property his name is Fabian Mills. He is 29 years old and he's living in Maypen in the parish of Clarendon. In the video I posted yesterday, I noticed that at least two persons, they were in the comment section defending the soldier 
strongly. I have no issues with that. But guess what? I had to block them because I see where they started disrespecting other persons who were commenting. Yes, I need your views, but this is not a free-for-all channel. Disagree, yes, but respectfully. So, some persons, they were asking, what of the guy named Warren who allegedly sold the $1.8 million car to Corporal Mills for 200000 Jamaican dollars? Warren, he was already arrested and charged by the police. I am told that he pleaded guilty and he was sent to a prison, but that has not been confirmed. There were persons who were asking if the soldier knew that he was a person of interest in this case. I wanted to pick sense out of this and you will find the answer. The soldier, he was the person who was held driving the thief in car. He was taken in by the police and he was questioned in front of his lawyer. So, what do you think? Was he aware that he was a person of interest? Also, remember that the allegation was that the soldier, he caused the car to be transferred in his sister's name. Well, that sister, she has now been charged by the police. Her name is Kellyanne Mills. She is 25 years old and she's living in Maypen, Clarendon. She was charged for the offenses of receiving stolen property and conspiracy to receiving stolen property. So she and her brother who was trying to board a flight to Atlanta, Georgia, they'll be going to the courts shortly. In this next report, a farmer, his name is McCoy Virgo. On November 2, coming up, Mackay, he would be celebrating his 42nd birthday. He lived at Plum District in the Mount Horeb area of St. James. We are told that Mackay's farm is about three miles away from his house at a district named Jericho in the same Mount Horeb area. And from time to time, Mackay, he would go to the farm and stay there for days, then return home. Last week, Tuesday morning, September 3, about 11 o'clock. Mackay, he was last seen by family members before he left to his farm. Yesterday morning, Wednesday, September 11, residents of the Jericho area, they smelled foul odor in the bushes and they went to investigate. When they checked, the decomposing body of Mackay was seen lying on his back in bushes along a dirt path. The police, they were called and they commenced investigations. We are told that the scene was processed and the police, they are awaiting the result of a post-mortem examination to ascertain how Mackay died. Sad indeed. Over in St. Catherine, yesterday morning, Wednesday, September 11, about minutes after 11 o'clock. Residents, they stumbled upon the body of a man along the Mandela Highway in the parish. He was later identified as Anthony Benjamin, popularly known as Bobby. Next month, on October 10, Bobby, he would be celebrating his 63rd birthday. He lived at Glades District in the Caymanas Bay area of St. Catherine. We are told that Bobby, he was last seen alive on Monday, September 9, at the Caymanas taxi stand. The scene was processed and investigators, they are awaiting the result of a post-mortem to ascertain how he died. Sad indeed. This next incident, it took place last night, Wednesday, September 11, about 9.30. It took place at Olive River in the Waterbit Police area in the parish of Trelawney. Our information is that a former police constable, he's about 40 years old and he's from Spanish Town in the parish of St. Catherine, but he's currently living in the Olive River area. He was driving his silver Nissan AD wagon motor car accompanied by a guy named Leon Martin. Leon was said to be living in the Wild Cane area of Sentan. The ex-policeman, 
he was heading towards his home when he stopped at a corner shop to purchase a drink. After he bought the drink, he went back into the car when a hoodlum opened gunfire at the car. The ex-policeman, he leaned back in his seat and we are told that he was grazed by a bullet to his forehead. Leon, he was not so lucky. He received gunshot wounds to his upper body. He was rushed to the Percy Junior Hospital where he was pronounced D.E.A.D. on arrival. The mayhem. The me so let me ask you something. <laughs> let me ask you know something. Have you hit on the love button as yet? If you have not yet done so, remember to hit on it. Also, if you are over here watching our videos and you have not yet subscribed, hit on the subscribe button as also. Hit on the notification bell. Then click all so that whenever we drop a new video, you will be one of the first to be notified. In the final story for today, this one, it took place yesterday afternoon. Wednesday, September 11, about minutes after 3 o'clock. It took place at Cottage Drive in the Gregory Park area of Portmore in the parish of St. Catherine. Our information is that the police, they received intelligence that a group of guys were seen in the Gregory Park area with high-powered weapons. As a result, a team of police officers went there. The police, they are saying that on their arrival, that guy on your screen, he was seen. They called out to him and he ran into the yard to the rear of the premises. The police, they are saying that they gave chase and it is alleged that the guy, he pulled a gun and in a few seconds, it was all over. The guy, he was hit and he fell to the ground. The police, they are claiming that he fell clutching a Taurus 9mm pistol with the serial number erased. It was affixed with a magazine containing four 9mm rounds. The police, they searched the house and they are alleging that three homemade firearms were found in a cardboard box under a bed. They also found one plastic bottle containing 15 9mm rounds in cornmeal in a shoebox. That guy, his name is Shakim Shemar Wilson. He was 30 years old and he's from Spanish Town Road in Kingston, but he was living at Cottage Drive in Gregory Park. Shakim, he died on the spot. The mayhem continues. Tell 
Blessed love, everybody. Tell a friend, for tell a friend, for tell a friend about Papa in News Link and PNL Blog TV. Like, subscribe, and share. With Silver Sin, if we just unite, what a country this will be. If we just unite, Jamaica live in unity. If we just unite, what a country this will be. If we just unite, Jamaica live in unity. Hey, private and mash up Jamaica. Criminals, them and mash up Jamaica. Jamaicans mash up Jamaica. Criminals,